Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special Monday mystery. We're going to be doing this Monday mystery a little bit different. Of course, I'm here with my friend and your friend, Stephanie, from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. And if you guys have not subscribed to Stephanie's channel, then you are missing out. She ha she's been on fire lately doing uh channeled readings and my favorites so far have been her elemental readings where instead of doing the 12 different zodiac signs she does the elements so like i'm an air sign i'm an aquarius stephanie is also an air sign because she's a libra and of course the water fire and earth signs these are my absolute favorite at this point that she does because she's been literally i mean i i said this on twitter when i shared the air sign Stephanie got off the phone and she was like, I think that was your story. <laughs> and I was like, I watched it and I was like, oh, mic drop. That's totally my story. <laughs> it's, it's like the thing about cards is like, you can't predict the cards that are coming out. And I'm like, I'm reading them and I'm like, what is going on? Bryce? <laughs> well, the funniest thing was like a couple of weeks ago, I think it was the first time you pulled the air sign. You were on there and I was watching it and you like were oblivious to the fact that it was also my story. And I was like, she's such a good reader. She's not even picking that up. But then, uh, but then she called me and I watched it and I was like, mm, yep, that's my story. And like the whole message was like, just be patient, which I've been told many times in my life. So if you guys have not subscribed to her channel, go ahead and subscribe. She doesn't just channel on my channel channels on her own channel too. So, um, I'm halfway through your channeling from last night. Um, and I can't wait to watch the rest of it. So if you're not subscribed to Stephanie, that link will be down in the description box below Stephanie. And I also have the same shirt on. We both got this shirt from a subscriber. That you says, might want to put it on full screen there, Bryce. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I need a director. I'm, yes, here we go. There is a crystal for that. This was from our friend Liz's shop. And as you guys know, our friend Liz, she will take requests. So Liz, let me pull Liz up here. Liz is the Liz Olive Show on YouTube. She also, she got her fame on TikTok, uh, but she's also got stuff up on YouTube as well. And her Etsy shop, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Elizabeth's t-shirts. I have a ton of them. And this is one of hers that she has a section where you can design your own. And one of our subscribers' husbands, I believe, designed yes. this. And yeah. requested that uh, Liz send Stephanie and me one. So to the person who uh, designed this and sent it to us, thank you. I yes, love thank it. Thank you so much. I love it too. And I will tell you if, if Liz is watching, which we're going to be talking to Liz later anyway, I can just text her. Um, I put it on Twitter, uh, the picture of the shirt when I got it yesterday on Twitter. And so many people are asking for this shirt. Um, uh, so Liz, if you're watching you might want to make more of these shirts <laughs> so because you know what friends there is a crystal for that um mm -hmm. so now i we're going to be today we're going to be doing a little bit of a monday mystery a small mystery uh that i couldn't find a lot of information on kind of like we never know where these stories are going to go do we stephanie like i always have it in my head like what's going to happen but when we talked about the last episode i did with stephanie where we spoke about um the high school and it turned into a whole breakdown of what's been happening in public schools across our country, which I did not expect that. So who knows what's going to be coming out of this uh, other story in Washington state. And then we're going to move into something that's happening astrological right now that um, I think it's important. Now we're filming this on Saturday. This is going to be aired on Monday, but we're in that same time window because I know people have been feeling a certain way these last few days. I've been like perpetually shaky these last few days and have been like in a panic mode. I think a lot of people have. So I've been um, having uh, serious downloads. And I mean, obviously I put my ch channeled message up on YouTube at 1130 last night, I believe it was. And I recorded it in the afternoon and it was like, are you sure, God? Are you sure? And it was like, Yashua was like, would you just put the darn video it up? up? <laughs> do it, do it. And I'm like, but there's some weird stuff in this. Would you just put that damn video up? <laughs> listen, listen, the truth is, wait, was it Mark Twain? 
I think Mark Twain said the truth is often stranger than fiction. So, oh, yeah. and we're learning that. So, so we're going to start with the, the, the Monday mystery for you guys and look into the cards. Now I have pulled my cards as you guys, if you watched our last few videos, I have been really fun in my groove with the light Sears deck. Um, but this morning I was telling Stephanie, I picked them up this morning and they were feeling really heavy and I was having kind of a hard time reading them. And that tells me that they need to rest because I have been using them a lot lately. They're just tired. So, and every time you shuffle them and use them for different stories, they, they hold on to that energy. And so just you guys, just to keep you guys update, um, we've talked about spiritual hygiene, hygiene before. I've already organized these cards in their appropriate order. As you can see, the fool is first going all the way back to the King of Pentacles, which is the last card. You can look up, there's a lot of websites that tell you how to order your cards. They're all facing upright. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this deck and I have this little selenite stick. And I'm basically gonna, just gonna put the cards right here on my, my bookshelf with the selenite stick on top of it for them to rest for a couple of days. And I've got my Rider weight deck right here, just the regular old deck. Um, as you guys know, most professional tarot card readers like Stephanie have God, like- I'm professional? Of course you are. You got a business, girl. <laughs> um, how many decks do you have, Stephanie, in your possession? <laughs> All right, you really want to know that? <laughs> okay, so for tarot decks, I have about, I don't know, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. And then as Oracle decks go, that's probably up in the 20 range. I, I, have, a, I have a problem. I need to go to Cards Anonymous. <laughs> No, I, well, that's normal. I mean, when you watch a lot of card readers, yeah, they all have that same have amount. Yeah. Tons of them because when you're reading them all the time, you, you can feel, can't you, when it's time for them to rest? Oh my God. Yeah. There's some times when I'm channeling and I'm just like, something don't feel right here. Um, yeah, I need to do another deck. You, you intuitively know, you just intuitively yeah. know. Yeah. And sometimes it can be, I know people have asked, like, are the cards being tampered with by negative forces? Sometimes that's the case. But sometimes with like my light seers deck, they just felt tired. They just felt like they needed a bit of a break. And so that's why I rested them. And, um, and I, I was thinking about using my mystic Mondays, but then something told me just to grab my basic, uh, writer weight tarot deck. And so that's what I did. Something told me to grab them. So I grabbed them, um, just in case I pull today. I don't even know if I'm going to pull today, but that's what I grabbed. So be aware of that guys. If you're getting into divination, remember all things hold energy. Everything holds energy especially when you're using these tools. And if the cards don't feel right, or if you're having a hard time shuffling them, or they're not making sense to you, or they just feel heavy, that probably means, means that they need to be rested. Um, so take that into consideration if you're learning how to uh, divinate. Okay, so um, are you ready for the mystery, Stephanie? Yes. And, and audience. So again, this is coming from Washington state. That's where we've been kind of hanging out for a while now is in Washington state. Cause man, oh man, is that an interesting, interesting place? Lots of information about these areas of the world that we were not privy to before this great awakening. Now, next week, um, I got some recommendation from some viewers. So there's some topics I'm going to jump into next week for Monday mystery that are not necessarily associated with Washington state. And again, guys, if you have any weird stories you want me to look into, let me know in the comment section below. Cause I'm always, this is something I enjoy. I'm a weirdo. I've always liked these like macabre weird mysteries because I think intuitively most of us know that they're not, they're not just folklore. They come from something. So, um, and so that's, what's so fascinating to me. And of course, all we have access to is what you guys have access to, which is search engines, libraries, and of course, our beloved divination tools, which we always have to take with a grain of salt anyway. Um, so let's talk about this mystery. We're going to be talking about the Dryden Hall face. All right. So Dryden Hall is a dormitory that's on Eastern Washington University campus. Little bit of background to this hall. It's named after Cecil Dryden, who was an associate professor of history and Professor Dryden wrote a history of the school. Now, when I was researching this story and somebody commented on the last Monday mystery with Mel's Hall that they wished the video was longer, me too. Like I give you guys all I, I can find basically. And with this mystery, I was considering doing a separate video and then having Stephanie on later, but there literally was not a whole lot of information 
to find, I thought about doing a deep dive into who Cecil Dryden was, but it just didn't seem like that was relevant to what's actually happening in this building. So a little bit about Eastern Washington University. It was founded in 1882. This was before Washington State became a part of the Union. Washington State became a part of the Union in 1889. Uh, it was built along a uh, railroad, the Northern Pacific Railroad uh, line, which makes sense. A lot of things were built along railroad lines just as before. A lot of things have been built up, uh, by rivers for, for transportation. That makes sense, right? Um, now, interesting thing about uh, this, this campus is that it has undergone two fires, which I find it's bad luck to want, have one fire, but to have two fires, like that's weird. And so I wanna take note of that because it is something I wanna ask about after we get through with the story. So the first fire happened in 1891. The second one happened in 1912. So let's talk about Dryden Hall again. So Dryden Hall opened in the fall of 1965. At that point, it was an all-female dormitory. Now it is a co-ed dormitory, but in 1965, it was just for girls. There was um, 129 rooms available for, the, for dormitories. And it was built, just so we know the, the, how it was built, it was built with reinforced concrete, stucco, and brick veneer. Now, I know back in the 1960s, um, both of my grandmothers who were born in the 30s did go to university. Both of them did, which was really, really rare for that time. Um, now that just seems normal to us, but 1965, you have to remember, this was still a time when women didn't, it wasn't really expected for women to go to university. Right. And so that was interesting to me. Now, something weird has happened since, to this hall since its conception and on the North, the wall facing the North wing, there is a mysterious screaming face. I kid you guys not. I'm going to show you one picture here. Let me share screen so you guys can see it. Um, this is, oops, let me go back to images here. This is the face, guys. It's right here. Can you guys see that? Like, it looks like the scream face. Remember the movie Scream? When we yeah. Were in school? That's what it looks like, guys. It's and here's one in black and white. Can you guys see the black and white? Where is that located in the hall? It's on the northern wing, the wall outside. So facing the outside, the northern wing. This and it's been there since like its conception. So that's why I told you guys again. It was built with reinforced concrete, stucco, and brick veneer. So I wanted to put in the materials it was built with, but that's freaking weird. All right. And now here's an interesting thing too. There is allegedly kind of a curse on this on this building and i couldn't find a whole 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 lot about this uh besides if you like reddit threads it's almost like a hushed secret we know that in uh on saturday morning march 12th 2005 a female student did take her own self off of the planet basically in dryden hall so that would have been around the same time that I was in school as well. So she probably would have been around my age. So she took herself off. And apparently this is this paranormal stuff is common in this hall. Um, if you if you are from Washington and you know more about this story, I would love to hear it in the comment section because there literally was not much to find. I mean, I even went through and scoured other YouTube videos from people who aren't truthers just to see what kind of information they had found. And it literally was just this. Like, what the hell is his face doing here? So, Stephanie, where should we start? Can we first ask about, um, let's first ask about the two fires and see if these two fires have anything to do with the um, paranormal phenomenon that's happening at Dryden Hall. Is there something going on with the, the school in general? It's weird. I, there's, a, there's a diner down the road from me. Same exact thing, two fires. That's very weird. Honest. I mean, it's not not weird. Like I never very weird. A fire. Not at, at that point. If I were the owner, I'd be like, "Yeah, this building's cursed. Let's move on to the next." Right? Like I, I mean, it's pretty bad luck to have to go through a fire one time, let alone two times. Like I, I that's that was like weird to me. And I was reading about it. It's even on the Wikipedia page, which we know Wikipedia, whatever. But I was like, "Is no one thinking this is strange? Like, is no one thinking that this is a little weird that there's already been two fires at this campus?" <clears throat> Have one more cards. Oh, High Priestess card. 
Secrets. Secret secrets are no fun. Secrets are for everyone. Well then. <laughs> um, okay. There's a couple different things going about my mind right now with this channeling. Um, I feel like there might be a curse on the building. Um, so it's like, uh, there's a lot of cups in this. So like Ace of Cups and uh, Page of Cups. So emotions. Somebody must have, I feel like there was something that happened on the campus that caused the curse. And actually, I don't get it's going to last. It's not going to stay there. I get the five of pentacles. It's temporary. But I feel like there might be some sort of spirit there that's kind of like not passed over to the other side. The other side of the veil, it's like earthbound spirit, right? Right. Like man, uh, maybe trapped in there um, who might have gone through a lot of heartache and pain and suffering. Um, and so this earthbound spirit might have cursed the building and, um, yeah, they feel trapped. They feel trapped. Um, and there's a lot of secrets, uh, behind, I'm getting a M U R D E R. Okay. And I'm going to, that's what I'm, that's what I'm channeling and picking up here. And they want to go to the other side. They want to be unbound. So just so you guys can see where this is located um, on the map. So here's Spokane, Idaho. The state of Idaho is right here. Um, when we've been talking about the, here's a, uh, we've been talking a lot about the national park, which is over here. And then we have uh, Canada right here. So for those who are not familiar with the state of Washington, it's closer to the Idaho side than it is to the Pacific coastline. If you guys can see that. Um, now, my question, as you were saying that, because with the last uh, mystery we talked about, it did have to do with like more of demonic ritualistic practices. Yeah. So this you're thinking is more earthbound. Did Definitely something earthbound because I get that hangman with um with the heart with the heartbreak card, and it's it's more it's like a trapped in limbo spirit, and with that two of pentacles. I mean, look at this. Look at this card. Yeah. They, they, they want to pass over to the other side and they're stuck. They need to get unstuck. And we've been saying a lot that the two <laughs> pentacles we're kind of getting in this time period means kind of like a timeline switch, which we know when we pass away, we're also going into a timeline switch. Now, does this um, entity have to do, this just kind of came to me when you were saying earthbound, did something happen with the railroad that was being built see. there? Like maybe it really doesn't have anything to do with the school. It's just where where the school was built with the rail. Because we know that a lot of shady stuff happened. Yeah. When they were because there there wasn't a whole lot of. I mean, I'm not a fan of governing bodies. I don't think Stephanie is either. I don't think anybody watching really is a fan of governing bodies. But we're we're talking kind of about coming out of the days of the wild wild west. You know. I'm getting some mixed signals here. I, I do intuitively. I'm picking up something happened in that school. Okay. I'm not necessarily, I, I also think that the railroad has a haunting behind it too. I mean, I have the double card and I have this two of swords. So I'm with the three of pentacles. So I feel like there was maybe, uh, maybe um, not a mafia, but a group of people not necessarily demonic, but uh, more nefarious, uh, kind of like just just assholes yeah yeah just uh well you watch the wild west movies you know you get the the nefarious characters and they're they're not necessarily possessed demonics but they're just assholes they certainly yeah. are polarized uh, on the negative side of things um but i feel like by the time the school was built that was no longer there because it's like uh the walking away from the old something. You know what I mean? I'm not getting it's necessarily the railroad. I when I was when I was channeling the last spread, I was literally getting it was a student. 
And my, and you, I was like viewing it. So here's my question now. So we think that maybe something before happened with the railroads, maybe the, the land itself was kind of feeling a little tired from that stuff. And it maybe attracted or triggered something to happen in the yeah. soil. If, if you're sitting on a pile of land with some negative energies that actually can induce a little bit of psychosis type of symptoms. I mean, I've lived in places I wasn't going mad. But the land I was on affected my demeanor, my mood. And when I moved out, it Jane. was gone. I went yeah. back to normal. So because energy cannot be destroyed, it's got to, it's got to sit somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? it's, yeah. Well, and, and for people who are empathic, which I think a lot of people are actually empathic and they don't even know it. Um, they're picking up on vibrational frequencies. I think actually, I think it's, probably pretty rare for someone to not be empathic at, at this at this date in the game now let's uh, so let's talk about the face on the dryden hall specifically what can the cards tell us about that face I, is it a person is it like just some weird way the building was built like what's i think it had something to do with its construction i think somebody was buried in the concrete no way yeah yeah. Um, somebody was paid to do it, too. Yo, I'm telling you, I did not expect that to happen. Like, no, yeah, they were buried. This is like, look, look at this. Look at this. It's like this person is standing at a grave site. So somebody covered up a... a yeah, it's their mark. Yeah. They their covered face. up a murder, basically. Yeah. Is yeah. it a male or female? Do we know energy... I'm not getting a particular energy, but I can ask that next. Um, I feel like that will come out, though. The justice card, yeah. That's that's funky. You never know what's going to come out of these cards, and I could be wrong. But I, Washington State Police, you need to call Stephanie because <laughs> that was <laughs> not a theory I saw in my research. Wow. So I mean, do you know how many times that happened with um? the construction of like the suspension bridges and everything like the Brooklyn bridge in New York and San Francisco, the golden gate bridge. Do you know how many people were purposely? I mean, I, yeah. You, what, when you get, it's so funny. I, I was just having this conversation the other day and I can't remember who I was having it with where you think about like, why do people do that? They're not going to get away with it. The likelihood of you getting away with it are actually really high. Most of them, the M words, most of those those things that happen where you remove somebody against their will don't ever get solved. The only times they get solved is if there it's a crime of passion where there's links to the person, right? Um, and, and so the reason why I asked if you knew this knew the sex, what or the cards? Give I'm asking now because guys, if you remember, we did I did a murder mystery, excuse me, a Monday mystery on um, a woman named Julie. Welfin, who was from Spokane. And I, I told you guys I wasn't going to ask for cards on her because um, I want to respect her, her family and they've never found the body. But in that study, I found that 50 other women had gone missing in this area. And look how close it is to Spokane. So what better way to hide a, a body than in concrete? Now I'm getting some more strange stuff. You, I kid you not. I just like randomly split the deck and I got the devil card with the eight of pentacles. Like this is things that people were working on strategically to get rid of. I'm getting a very strange story here. So bear with me. I am pulling, I have like 10 cards out on the spread and it's telling a story. So. Well, we're here for it. <laughs> And of course, there goes the famous jumping card of Stephanie. Is there a church near this area? A church? Yeah, I don't know. Can we look on the map and see if there's a church? Yeah, let me see. Let me actually type in the nearest church to Dryden Hall. I think there's more than one body in there. I think it's a uh, was to be a married couple. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. I'll tell the story while I look this up. All right. I think, well, either it's some sort of clergy member that was in there, or it was somebody to be married. That's why I'm asking if there was a church there. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, there was supposed to be a union. There was supposed to be a union. These two are together. Somebody was supposed to get married. And then I feel like one of them may be ran away. They, they ran away because they were dissatisfied with who they were marrying. So they plopped them in the concrete. Yo, so this is really are, weird. It, yeah, this, there was a fight. And look at I get that burial card again. So there is Newman, New, Newman Center Catholic Church, Lutheran Campus Ministry, and a Methodist Church that are like, oh, and there's St. Paul's Episcopal Church. So yeah, there's quite a, there's four here. Here's uh, Eastern Washington University. You know what that tells me, Bryce? It's on a ley line. Can we check that? Because we know churches are, eh. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so, oh God knows churches. <laughs> so I'm going to just, for the audience, put on the big screen again. All right. Put on the big so, screen. Yeah. Okay. So somebody was going through. No, no, no. No big screen like with oh. me. Sh show my pretty face. Not really. Oh, of course. Show my pretty cards. Okay. <laughs> um, so somebody, somebody. There was a couple to be married in one of those churches. Okay. This is a spiritual leader. This is actually marriage. And this is a union. All right. So for the people who don't know tarot, there was a fight. Which then led to them going into the concrete. Are they because or just somebody was stolen. Something was stolen. One, one, one member of those people, either the to be husband or the to be wife, was dissatisfied with who they were marrying. They the could have just called off the engagement. <laughs> well, maybe it was an arranged marriage. I don't know. I mean, as you were, I mean, I I split my deck and look, look how uneven this de deck was split, and look how it split as the hierophant with the devil. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think I think the clergy member. Oh yeah, see, look at this. This is a payment. I think the clergy member helped the other person say bye-bye to the other person. Yeah. I mean, these cards, it was in my face. I mean, I, I again, I mean, I could be wrong on this mystery, but I mean, this is pretty wild. But um, uh, let's see if it's on a ley line. This, this is my favorite one yet, Bryce. I mean, I did not, I told you guys, like, I did not expect this <laughs> Hey, you never know. You never know what comes out in the cards. I don't know either. It just CSI, Stephanie and Bryce. <laughs> like this is why I mean, it makes sense. I mean, if I get a call from the police department over there, I'm gonna know why now. <laughs> so I want to do that. I want to get a time frame because I might actually look and see if we can find missing pe I, off camera, see if I can find missing people. I don't know if the cards can give us a time frame. I don't do well with time frames. I'll be honest. Um, I mean, the tower pulled up. As I said, that it's on a ley line. This well, the, the Dryden hall was built in 1965. So it would have, it would have had to have been around that time for them to get the body into the, So the clergyman would have had to make a deal with also the um, Ace of Cups. Kind of ley line. Yeah. But then the clergyman would have had to have made a deal with like the construction company too, right? To get, like paid them off to get the body in there. Oh, that's what I'm getting. I, I had a three of pentacles in my first spread. It was a collaborated thing. Absolutely collaborated. People are batshit crazy. I mean, just freaking call it the engagement, guys. <laughs> Call Batman. <laughs> Roll me that, Batman. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, I've dated some assholes in my life, but I'm still alive. Don't ask if I'm the incarnate of that person. <laughs> I think that, okay, so is that whoever, so that's the soul that's still, does that yeah. soul, this is what I'm going to ask. We don't know if it's the male or female or whatever. We don't know. I just want to know, does that soul know that it's no longer in human form? Let me ask that. Because I know from my study of the paranormal that that can cause issues if they don't know that they're not alive. <laughs> I just pulled the Wheel of Fortune, too. So I think you're right. I think this is Stephanie. What if we, we cracked the case? 
You can't, you keep having me open up a big massive can of worms over here. <laughs> I mean, I, I really, I thought it was going to be like, oh, you know, the, the bad guys of using it to harness energy. I did not expect this. No, this is more earthbound. This is not <laughs> this demonic. This is bad people, not necessarily people in the club. Um, no, this, this spear knows it's dead. Is it pissed off? Yeah, it's pissed off. It actually, it, it's, um, it's, if the, the spirit feels very trapped. And, and again, I got this card when I was getting it felt trapped. Um, and it, it feels like it's been robbed of everything. Um, is it, that why women sad. have the propensity to want to themselves there? But maybe like they're feeling that, that, that spirit's energy, maybe, um, you know, uh, I, I feel like though, actually it's the spirit's going to go to the other side soon. Good. Two cards, Cause that's because like abundance and all the planning for the future. Yeah. Um, well, you know, as we ascend and everything, I, I think a lot of these earth trapped spirits are going to be able to then gonna move release. on. Yeah. Yeah. So is the face on the wall, this spirit space? Or is it caused just an image caused by the spirit in the like it looks like a screaming face. So is that like the I think it was the, the person was screaming as the person was buried. I was gonna ask that. Yeah. And it dried that way. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. That's horrific. That's something out of a freaking NCIS movie or something. That's freaking horrifying. So um is there for people that live in the area, if we have viewers from the area, is there anything they can do spiritually to help the spirit move on if the spirit wants to be helped? Okay. If anybody watches the YouTube channel Omar Gosh, he does paranormal investigations. I mean, he's very, very famous on YouTube. He's got like several million that, uh, million viewers. I wonder if he's ever gone into this place because I just had to download that. And he's very spiritual. Very like I love this channel. If anybody wants to watch, I'll actually link when I'll I link it. Yeah, I'll link it. Actually, Bryce, you would you would appreciate his channel too. Um, you know, because I know you like the mystery stuff. Um, I'm getting that. I'm getting that you know a group of people might be able to go to this to the wall and 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 say maybe a uh, a prayer or mantra over the area, and and maybe they can bring some elements with them, um, like you know, elements in the, in the ground, like gold and silver and crystals and stuff like that have a very good high frequency. Um, there's a crystal uh, for that. There's, there's a crystal for this. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you're a high vibrational person, I mean, just bringing yourself may, might be good enough too. Um, but if you have crystals of some kind, um, maybe get a, a crystal of all the chakras or something. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, it, it's just coming out. Um, you'll help this, this spirit walk away from being bound. Um, but it has to be, I'm getting three or more people with that card. And I got the earth down with the balance and then the legacy 10. And I would say too, something I'm getting is maybe acknowledging what happened, yeah. acknowledging. And maybe that's why the spirit sticks because it wants justice. Well, that I got the justice card too. when I got the justice card when I pulled on it first. So yes, the spirit, that's what I'm getting. The spirit needs closure. So uh, if, if these people can go to that, to the wall, I'm getting to the actual wall where this is um, and, and say something like, we understand this happened to you and it's okay to let go now. You can go to the other side now. It wasn't we we right. are acknowledging what happened to you. It and wasn't we are, fair. Yes, this was not fair. Rest you are free to go to rest now. Yeah. Exactly. Could you imagine? I mean, before you get married, that's supposed to be like the happiest time of your life. And to have the person that you put your whole trust into for your future do that. I'm not thing. getting it was that kind of. It was more arranged. I'm getting it was definitely more of an arranged thing. That's what I was picking up on. I was actually, I, I, I guess you can call it remote viewing the, the, the scene. I felt like one of them felt trapped into getting married and was desperate. I, I feel like the parents were forcing this upon the, the couple. Was there a pregnancy? That's a good question. Let's ask. You said you think there's more than one. And so that would make it the female then if there was a pregnancy that. I'm picking up it's a male. Oh, male. 
just in, and not through the cards, just intuitively. I'm picking up the, the whoever was put in there was was a male. Was the female in this union pregnant? Because I'm trying to think about the in 1965, like what would justify kind yeah. of like an arranged marriage in the Western world in 19 that would it would be a pregnancy, a shotgun. What do they call them? Shotgun wedding. Unless. Unless there's some sort of bloodline stuff going on, too. I mean, there's different things. Uh, if you were uh, Italian um, in that time, you married Italian. Like, there's certain ethnic groups. You don't go outside your your circle of ethnicity. Um, if you're in a mafia of some kind, you don't go us. Like, you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's stipulations and some cultural, cultural, cultural boundaries. Yeah. Woman. Yeah, she was. She absolutely is pregnant. Um, she didn't want to be. That's that's a fertility card, the Empress. The Empress could be fertility. Um, and she she wanted to walk away from that. I'm guessing the woman wanted an uh, uh an A B E E to removal. To, 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 to remove it. And maybe the the um the man didn't or maybe the man was trying to force her into getting one and she didn't want it. I'm getting this was an unwanted pregnancy and one of them wanted freedom. So yeah. was the one of them was holding on to the pregnancy. So I, I feel like the woman was holding on to the pregnancy and had to get rid of the man somehow. Oh my God. What a fucked up situation that is. Telenovela here. Christ, what'd you bring me on the show for? I mean, I literally did not. I mean, I said this in the beginning. It always goes in directions we don't expect, but this is literally what not. I did not expect this at all. I thought it. Wow. So now I'm going to do some digging into like mysterious disappearances of a pregnant woman's fiance or whatever. Um, maybe a part two. Maybe a part two. See if we can find viewers. Viewers, if y'all find anything, I send it over. Because did we just crack the case? I don't know. If, if I got the FBI knocking on my door, I know what. <laughs> I know what. I was just reading cards, man. I was just reading I'm cards. I'm just a divinator, okay? That's all I am. I'm just a divinator. I'm not a miracle to, worker. like, reveal something. Um, it's kind of like there's that podcast a few years ago up and vanished here in Georgia. Payne Lindsay uh, did it. He picked just a random missing person from Georgia, from Osceola, South Georgia. And literally he solved the case. It didn't mean to. And he became, I don't know if you guys have listened to that, but he literally like solved the case on by doing this podcast, by trying to find this missing person that vanished a long time ago. So, I mean, stranger things have happened. So can we just pull to see what the outcome is going to be? Or like, let's live let's for shits and giggles, Stephanie. Let's ask the cards. Did you just make, did you just crack the case? Washington police, if you're watching, <laughs> pay close attention. Actually, my neighbor. So my neighbor, during the um, shenanigans of the summer of 2020, my neighbor was a cop here in Atlanta. He was a black man. He was a cop. And he went through hell and back with the shenanigans that were going on. And he moved to Washington state. He transferred out of Atlanta because of, um, you know, all that stuff. So maybe if I saw his number, I can contact him and be like, yo, bro, guess what? <laughs> I think we figured something out. <laughs> Do you work in homicide? What about cold cases? <laughs> what the hell was that? Did you see that? Uh -uh. I had not just one flying card, five. And I already pulled like six. Hold on. After you pull this, I'm going to ask who who is actually giving you this information. I've, I'm who's the person that's telling you this? Is it sore? I want to know. Like, who am I channeling? Yeah, like who's who's directing the cards right now? Because that will be really telling too. Well, this is moving out of troubled waters. This is a blessing in disguise. So you tell me, emotional balance and strength this is uh i get the world card uh maybe solving the disappearance of someone yeah From here. um oh when i got that uh temporary yet painful maybe 
maybe, yeah, that's the end of the temporary at painful. <laughs> um, moving on. Wheel of Fortune. Stephanie cracked the case, y'all. <laughs> I wasn't by accident, guys. <laughs> by accident. Oops. <laughs> Wild. Well, can we ask? Do you have your board? Can we ask, like, who is telling you this? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm curious. Because literally, that was like a lot of information just for one little paranormal mystery, which I didn't think it was going to go there. Oop. Michael, please come in and guard our Zoom for us while we're doing this. What angel is the angel of communication? Gabriel. Archangel Gabriel's giving me the info. Boom. Which is one of my spirit guides. Actually, he's like my number one spirit guide besides Yashua and my grandma. Those are like my three top. Those are my three top team members. Go team. Case. If anybody watching wants to, you can forward this video over to the Washington police. Just be like, I think these girls figured something out. <laughs> they, they opened a can of worms. They didn't realize what they're opening. <laughs> are the people who did this still alive? <laughs> Let's just double check that. I mean, 1965, chances are they're not. These people still alive. Well, if they're alive, I mean, I would assume they're maybe like too old. I mean, to come, not come not, not as mobile, not as mobile as a as a little spring chicken. You know, listen, listen, y'all. We're divinely protected. I know I'm. Div I freaking know I'm divinely protective, and Stephanie is too. So I have ships above my head. You come near me, and it's gonna be like, what's that? That that scene out of uh, out of um Independence Day where. You, you blast this. No, it blasts the, the, the building. <laughs> That's all I see in my head. <laughs> all I know is it's kind of humorous. Like, how many death spells have put on me? Like, LOL, I'm still here. <laughs> you can't touch me. Well, anyways, let's see if this these, these people are still alive. Are they? Yeah. Alive? I don't, I don't think, well... If they are, they'd be really old and probably I'm not getting any indicators. I mean, no, I think they're gone. I mean, if it was like, let's say they were in their 20s, and they would be like in their 70s, pushing 80s now. So, yeah, I, I think they I mean, if there's any, it's not all of them. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just wanted yeah. to make sure no one was going to show up at our houses. I Listen, this is an accident. I didn't mean to open I didn't. Yeah. We're just trying to have some fun, look at some mysteries, and I guess, you know, what does it say in the Bible? Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Who thought that the Bible was talking about, oh, ask the tarot cards and you shall receive. Wow. Wow. So there you go, guys. I, I can't even speak right now. Let us know what y'all think down in the comment section below. It makes sense to me. They should use this story in sex ed classes. You know, I mean, they, they try to scare you with the whole pregnancy thing, but there's something worse that can happen. Apparently so. <laughs> so, so, okay, guys. So anyway, if, and if you guys, if this like story rings a bell, if you're from the area and you, I don't think it's a big area. So if you know of someone who went missing and his fiance was pregnant or something like around that time, if you've heard stories, like let us know. Cause Stephanie nor I are from Washington state. I've been to Washington state one time for a yoga thing. So I've never been to this area. I don't know people in this area. So fill us in if you do. And this is a divination tool. Let's yeah. just also keep that in mind too. Take what resonates. Yeah. It's not, Divination tools are not hard, cold facts, guys. They're just, yeah. They're kind of fun. They're just, yeah. And they just help you guide me. I mean, but it, that story doesn't make sense, though. And the fact that we didn't, I wasn't even thinking that when uh, the story started. I'm just, I'm just reading with the cards. Sorry. That's, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and I didn't tell you anything about this before we started filming, did I, Stephanie? You never do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To the audience, like, I don't ever know what I'm walking into. Like, yeah. ever. 
<laughs> the door of the unknown with Bryce. <laughs> Boys I've dated would probably say the same. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so now we're going to change topics because as I said at the beginning, and Stephanie knows this, these last few days have been batshit crazy, like energetically. Like nothing super wild has happened, but like I've been feeling weird energy, like a heaviness, and I've been really shaky and um, like there's this dread. And I know that there's, a, I know there is a lot going on. Like I can't say her name, but one of our people from Georgia, they want to now take off because of Congress because of her supporting the people that did that thing in January. I can't, it's, you know, there's a lot of unfairness going on. We also see the whole, whole Elon Musk thing. Um, what else is happening at this point? There's a lot happening right now. Around My video from yesterday happened yesterday and, and I, I had a comment on there to that person. Thank you very much. I believe she follows you too. Um, she said that the message that I posted about, so if you go into my video, I posted it late last night. It's a channeled message from me off Jesus. Um, somebody that's a seer also posted yesterday the exact same message that I channeled which was yeah. a confirmation. So um, <clears throat> the message was that the devil was thrown into a portal and it was closed off. This morning, I had the download to douse where this portal is located. And I'm not going to say the country's name because it would trigger the algorithm on YouTube. However, if you use your imagination and understand what area of the world right now is the highlights of the news. Is it the, the country that starts with unicorn? Yes. Like, yeah, okay, so the unicorn, that's what I think we'll call it. Those, those underground areas were said to have been worse than DC. They were the worst in the world. They were so horrific that people are coming out of there like super traumatized to the point where I think there's been a couple of soldiers that have actually taken their lives oh, from wow. what I was getting, yeah. So I could be wrong on that, but that's something that I don't know if I channeled that or if I heard that somewhere because it was a about a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, those. Um, and then Tamara talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of validates what I was getting. So um, I actually intuitively was getting um, that there was a, there it was a massive portal there. And it's actually, I believe, either the last portal or one of the last portals that needs to be closed up before we can start our ascension process. Or well, does Cassiopeian speak of this as well? That that's how the Kentuckians. So, and I'm going to clarify this because I think people are confused. I'm not saying Kentucky. This has nothing to do with the state of Kentucky. These are the Kentuckians, which is a um, planet or was a planet that was also destroyed by the Draco, and we call them the Nordic people. So people that look like me um, or Kentuckian. And they were brought here through the country, the unicorn country. Um, so we'll just call it the unicorn because it starts with the U, right? Yeah. Um, so, so, and guys, I wanted, I brought this up too because both Stephanie and I watched this lady, Frankie. She's fantastic. Like she cracks me up. I love this lady so much. I actually, um, when I did my uh, channeling this week on my elementals, I actually decided intuitively to, to, to kind of do a spread like she does and um, do the Oracle cards first and then go with the tarot and just like pull as many as I intuitively got. That's what she does. I love her style. Um, and she's been picking up some crazy shit. Yeah. So like, I was crazy. I was watching this and actually made me feel better because it kind of validated some of my, sorry, some of my feelings. Come on. Oops. Sorry guys. Hold on. Um, but she taught, she talks about what is meant for you will be yours. A giant tsunami has struck spiritual day today. And this is referring to the 22nd of April. Now I'm not someone that follows dates because dates are man-made. Um, but something was definitely going on and there's been a tsunami of um, what we call karmic energy. And so, and, and there's different levels of karmic energy. I think that we've talked about this before. Some karmic energy is just basic stuff where you learn from it, but some of it is like dark. And so yeah. basically all these dark players are scrambling right now. And when you put a wild animal up against the wall, it's going to behave in it's a It's going to crash and it's exactly. going to buck and it's going to, it's going to scream. It's going to do whatever it does. And 
The other thing too is, uh, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead here, Bryce, but that planetary alignment. Yep. That was my where I was going next. So how many years in between these alignments? Thousand years. That's interesting. So I actually, I don't believe anything in life is coincidence. I always think uh -huh. that spirit is always talking to us. Yep. And I was on my Twitter today and this just popped up. I don't follow this woman. I don't know who this woman is, but somebody had liked it or shared it. And I saw it and I was like, I sent it immediately to Stephanie. And I was like, so she posted 18 hours ago, once in a thousand year alignment of Saturn, Mars, Venus, and Jupiter photo taken at five. Wait. Bryce, Bryce, hold up. That's interesting. Saturn, I know, represents a, a good thing when it's used property, but properly. But, and sorry to interrupt you, Saturn has been used as the, like, the Saturnalian, like, the, the, the demonic, right, the, the Lucifer. Mars is masculine energy. Venus is feminine energy. And then you have Jupiter. Jupiter is Christ energy. Yeah. Yeah. The Christ. Mars is That's also interesting. war. Mars is also the planet of war. Venus, and Venus is, is love. Aphrodite, it's love. And Jupiter is, yes, it's the Christ consciousness. Actually, where a lot of churches are, they built them on top of old Jupiter temples. The Jupiter temples were good, just the churches were not because they tried to invert that, that energy, right? Yep. Um, the eye of Jupiter matches certain uh, pyramids in our world. So our ancestors knew about this. So let's, it, you know, it kind of reminds me of two stuff. And you remember back in December of, was it 2019 where we had the alignment that entered that was 2020, 2020 into the yeah. end of Aquarius. And it was like the star of Bethlehem. But what does that kind of look like? It kind of looks like another kind of like the way it lines up. I mean, look guys, I live right in the middle of the city. So I can't, I, I can't see jack shit in the sky. I just see skyscrapers, but, um, that kind of looks like another star. So can we pull on this? Yeah, let's pull and see what we get here. What do we need to know about this planetary alignment with Jupiter, Venus, Mars, and Saturn? That happened, what, yesterday or the day before, Bryce? It happened 18 hours ago, so yesterday. And guys, again, we're filming this on Saturday. This is, what's today's date, the 23rd? This is not going to air until Monday, the 25th. But as we know, with different energies they hold for a while. So they hold patterns for a while. So this will still be happening on Monday as well. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Literally it's holy, right? <laughs> holy spirit activate. <laughs> Listen, God talks in the cards. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Sometimes like, it's like, oh my God. Oh my oh, God. Too. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my Jupiter. Jupiter. What's going on? Hold on. I, I'm asking specifically about the alignment here. This is, this is nuts. And I'm getting all major arcanas, by the way. All right. Can you put me back on big screen so I can show the cards here? Holy crap. Whew, I got goosebumps. What's that grease song? I got chills. They're multiplying. Oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> John Travolta. <laughs> it's not a John Travolta card, actually. Then I was, I was shoveling. The Nine of Cups is our John Travolta card. Well... Versus the tower. Okay. That's that's just the beginning, Bryce. That's just the beginning. You ready? Yeah. You ready? Make sure you have sit your ass down and wear a diaper. You might shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't that's that the hair font and the death card. Because, guys, hair font, it, sometimes the hair font is aspected well as, like, marriage. This is my CA. So, when I'm reading this kind of stuff, this is, like, the C-A-B-A-L card. Yeah. Because the tippity top of that mafia is the church. So, yeah. and I, I, I'm getting, like, I'm getting, 
I'm going through my my channeled message yesterday from Yashua. The devil's gone. Yeah. Hello. I'm trying to find the Rider Waite hair font because you can definitely see it on the Rider Waite one that it's it represents yeah, it, a it's, lot it's of. Yeah, it's the Baphomet symbol. On there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this that's what this is. It's just confirming what I got last yeah, last night or yesterday. In addition to that, I'm getting. Uh, Queen. Can you see the Baphomet symbol? Yeah. Yeah. That's like a Lyran energy card. <laughs> the lion. The lion, uh, the Christ energy. The house of Judah, the line of Judah, yeah. which is the Lyran group um, the, that carries the Christ consciousness. This, this could be uh, T-R-U-M-P, like he's Lyran, you know, orange mad go man gone bad kind of thing. Like he's taking his pa power to annihilate because as and i've been saying that it's not dates we're waiting for astrological alignments the high priestess we've been waiting for astrological alignments not dates if you told alignments. me i was going to be channeling all this stuff a year ago i would have like thought some you were drunk or something like um let me see if i can get any more clarifying cards about this. anything else we need to know about this planetary alignment what does Venus represent? Love. Holy shit. So twin flames are going to come back in the union. And so I'm not just thinking twin flames. I'm also not only that, that needs to happen. Absolutely. But people, you know, cause it's a rare thing. People have amazing soulmates out there that will come in union too. And I, soulmate I, I, unions are way easier than twin flame ones. So if you have, if you don't have a twin flame, you ain't missing much. Yeah, they, they're going to be, oh, there's going to be a quick, this is on the bottom of the deck. This is holding on to something. So I feel like this is like the unity. Does that make sense? Yeah. The unity. Um, here goes a flying card again. Guys, I'm so sorry. My cards just like to fly. Well, I pulled three when you're down. only needed three because it confirms everything you just. Yeah, so. This separation was temporary yet painful, but they're embarking on a new. Yeah. So, I mean, th this is a multitude. This is a multidimensional, multilayered. Uh... Now, what I'm going to do is after we film this, I'm going to look in the book of Revelation and find, see if I can find that constellation written in there. Okay. I know, I know we're past that. There are, I mean, Melissa Redpill has actually literally picked up the entire story through the stars and everything. I know we're in the Battle of Gog and Magog, but what I think is the Book of Revelation also repeated itself to a certain degree for the Battle of Gog and Magog. And the Battle of Gog and Magog is written in that book. Also I would say look at, the, look at the war, war scroll, too, from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay. The war scroll, because it's about this time. And it talks about the different tribes coming together. And now that when, when I read it, I didn't know that the tribes were galactic. We should do a, we should do a mystery on that. Oh, what cards on that? Okay, let's do it. Okay, the, uh, let's audience, do it. let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually know. was going to ask you if you, if the audience and you too, if y'all wanted us to do like a deep dive into Bible characters, because some of these, I know we talk about consent, but I don't think some of these characters actually existed. So I want to look and see. Like, I would only, I would only channel God anyways. Okay. I would channel source on that one. If you guys want us to do a deep dive, because I think Abraham, Father Abraham, was a freaking. Not good. I never, even as a kid, he creeped me out. Even at vacation Bible school, he creeped me out. Like, why does the dude got to have so many wives? Like, that's not good. You know? Okay, so I'll show you what I pulled. Um, and I only need three. Three of Pentacles, magi Magician to the World. Agreement was made. Usually this is a, like a coven card, but I say that, see, this card is like agreement between the alliances to flip everything at this time to end a cycle so we can start a new cycle. Yeah. These planetary alignments have a lot to do with cycles and seasons. Yep. So that's why it's so important to follow the astrology. This is why they don't want us to know the astrology. Well, guess what? <laughs> this is a John Travolta car, guys. There's John Travolta. It does look like him. <laughs> That was fun, Bryce. That was fun. Can we ask uh, yeah. one more question? Yeah. Are we about to see some really wicked shit happen with the players? 
I mean, we're talking about like the dark side has players from the top tippy toppy. All let's ask about the dark players who just who uh, uh, put them out themselves out there as truthers. Are we going to see them start to crumble now that their source is going? I'm I'm a little hesitant to ask that specific question. What I will do is I will ask if the lower players that have not been rounded up yet are okay. about to be rounded up. I just don't want to, you know, I need to be integral about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, I just pulled the judgment card. Death and judgment. Let's flip the deck. Yeah, I would uh, say that's a big whopping. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Not only do I get an ace of pentacles, but um, they're about to, it's not going to get fun for them. Uh, that This could talk about like a withdrawing from a, a substance um, and that's, they're, they're getting picked up and, and being taken places. Bye-bye, yeah. Felicia, the patron <laughs> art of goodbyes. St. Felicia, the patron saint of goodbyes. Bye, Felicia. Um, so one more question, all of us, myself included, have been feeling like really panicky these last few days. And, you know, I've been like trembling. I've been very sad. Um, a lot is coming up. I, and I realized talking to other people that it wasn't just me feeling this way. Are we feeling the energy of the panic coming from people around us? Possibly not that we know, but just in our vicinity, are we feeling a collective like panic from the bad guys is that what we're feeling and while because we're empathic most of us watching are empathic they're not but we are i've been feeling not panic but a sense of urgency mm -hmm. dread um, i've been feeling dread yeah we are feeling their energy i got an ace of pentacles um in addition to that i also feel like not only that there, there's definitely the planetary alignment that is causing it, that energy. That's a big, that's what four planets aligned. That's a huge alignment. That's super rare. Yeah. And for that alignment, imagine, I mean, one planet has enough energy. You put four in a row, that's a lot of energy to be feeling. And, and Mars is one of those planets, which is the planet war. of war. So, I mean, and then you have that Venus planet, which is the planet of love. So it's almost like this, up, down, up, down, up, down, fight or flight, fight or flight feeling. You know what I mean? And then you get the Christ consciousness planet along with the, what the demonics have taken. And, and th there's a polarization. There's a negative and a positive charge that's happening, I feel like. Um, I'm just intuitively getting that. But planetary alignments also to, I think, Mother Gaia. So our planet, Ascension, is also causing that. Um, if you go onto my community page, about two or three days ago, I took a picture of the clouds. The veil was gone. I mean, I didn't see a veil, it, it, all rainbow. And the thing is only certain people can see it. So if you're ascended enough, you can see these things. Um, but yeah, there's there's a timeline merging happening too, Bryce. So there's multitude of things that are happening. Um, you can't really see very well in the pictures. I mean, it was more vivid, but I mean, can you pick up on that, that rainbow yeah, right there? Oh yeah, there's like pink there, yeah. Well, it was pink. It was purple. I mean, yeah, I, I say purple. I'm seeing some purple too, which, which, yeah. we have. okay, well, let's ask this. So we've laughed about this because what the fuck do we actually know? Like everything we've been told is a freaking yeah. lie. Is our sky blue or is that the firmament? Yeah, I think it's the firmament. If you I do know too, because opinion, I know from times that I've been taken to other planets, I know I sound crazy saying that, but the sky was purple. Well, we have, we're able to astro travel. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't sound crazy. We, we had, so one night, I don't know if we talked about this on air, Stephanie, one night you and I had the exact same dream. Exact. Exact. exact identical weird. dream. And our dogs were with us too. Yeah. And it was the exact same and the sky was purple and we like pulled on it and it was the Pleiades. Yeah. We were there for training. Sky different. I'm going to ask if the sky is a different color other than blue. The flying card. I don't think it's blue. No, it was it was put there. Um, and it's like the four corners of the earth. It's just kind of being held there until the right time until events happen. It's and we go into a different until we go into the different dimension. So sky's not blue, guys. I'm telling you, like it was beautiful, wasn't it? When we 
the be- it was purple. It was purpley pink. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And there was a lot of crystals everywhere. It was, it was, um, the, the colors, I saw colors I'd never seen in my life, which by the way, earth is going to end up being colors you never seen in your life. Um, <coughs> but the colors we see now are actually quite dull compared to what we will see. It was and vibrant. We, yeah. It, it was very vibrant. Like a- fish you know like when you look at like a fish tank at the bottom like the way people die- yeah it was like that exactly like that it was almost like neon kind of mm-hmm. like it popped and and it brought joy to me i felt such joy and healing um just looking at the colors it was weird i can't ex- I, I can't explain it i knew and when that I, it felt very familiar i know we're yeah from, we're from lyra like i know that but lyra was also destroyed and we ended up in pleiades for a while but it felt like a place and the people we were with or I don't know if they call themselves people. I don't know what the Pleiades, Pleiadians call themselves. This, the humanoids that we were with, we seem to know too. It was very, um, they were kind of trying. I, I felt very comforted. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was why I just thought I had some wild dream, but then we were, you called me like, I I, yeah, dream. I texted you and I said, I just had quite the dream. And you're like, oh my God, I just had the same exact dream. Exactly yeah. identical. So like, yeah, 100% identical. I was like, yeah. And the grass was like crystals. And she's like, oh my God. Yes. It was <laughs> It was gorgeous. It was yeah. so, so if that's any indication of what our earth is going to look like. I've had visions of the new earth. And I, there was a mist of rainbow everywhere. Um, yeah. So, okay. Like kind of look at this card right here. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's like I call it like almost like an iridescent. There's one card in here that definitely reminds me of it, and I'll keep talking as I'm looking for it real quick here. But um it there was a lot of waterfalls, lots of water, like and and the water was like um oh, like unreal. It was gorgeous. I mean, just picture the Caribbean everywhere, that blue turquoise um coloring and where the hell is this card of course i'm not gonna find it aren't i um but yeah it was i had this particular vision after i had a total emotional meltdown after getting in a fight with my brother about uh everything that's going on and um he didn't believe me and i took it a little hard and (laughs) this is this is a while ago i didn't even have a youtube channel up then and I saw this, this, um, I'll never forget it. And oh my God, watch, it's going to be the last card, Bryce. <laughs> you know what? I can't find it. What the hell? Okay, never mind. I guess I had maybe, a, maybe I had a dream once and I'm not going to get into the details. I've told you about this dream, Stephanie. I'm not going to get into the details of what I was doing in this dream. But do you remember I told you I was doing something very specific with another person? But I was in this garden. And the plants were like vibrating. It was, it was, it was beautiful, but it was nothing like I'd ever seen on the earth before. And we got that. It was actually like right before the fall of Tartaria, the fall of the thousand years of peace where we, our earth got kind of confiscated back by this club, this group of people that makes sense. And if it's anything like my dream or, and now I know it was a memory, it wasn't a dream. Um, holy shit. Yeah. It, so I, I said this in a video once I, um, I put healing music up to my plants last year in my garden, my, my garden started to dance. Like, I'm not joking. They were just swaying to the beat and having a good, it was like a plant party, you know, like <laughs> raise the roof. <laughs> um, but but plants plants have souls too we, we often forget that they're one-dimensional souls right so um uh, i i did a uh wonderful video with um emmy my friend emmy the other day and she said that she had uh done something similar or whatever for her plants and they grew huge like it really like oh no she did reiki on her plants yeah. and they grew huge and she got like a, a, an amazing crop in her garden or, or what, whatever it was. Um, so the vibrational frequency of earth is going to change drastically and it's going to be a healing frequency. Um, and so that wouldn't shock me if the plants 
did do that. I mean, they were like illumin. They were like, it's kind of like that the lights on your palm tree, but they were like in, it was like, the, it, it was, it was beautiful. And I thought it was, you know, so pay attention to your dream guys, because sometimes they're not dreams, write them down. Sometimes they're memories that now I know that was a memory. I know exactly what I was doing, why I was doing it. I know exactly what was happening. Now I know that. Um, and so, so yeah, this is exciting guys. So if you're feeling anxious, like, don't worry, just a little hiccup before, but it's, it's all happening. Part of my uh, message from Yashua yesterday too, when I was, I did cards and dousing. If you haven't watched that video yet, it was quite profound. Um, I was just as like blown away as anybody else would be. Um, he specifically said, we need to love one another and we need to have faith. Um, because, you know, I, I, I can't stress it enough. It's like the, um, that switch gets flipped and there are going to be some people out there like us that are like, oh shit, flip it back. What the hell is this? Like, it's going to look a little hectic. At yeah, first. And, I, and I've said that before. There is going to be, don't, don't kid yourself. It's not going to be gonna, unicorns. Gonna be and You're going to go through mourning when, when, all we know in this life is the matrix. That's all we know. And so if you really think about that, everything you know is about to come crashing down. And even though we want it to, it's going to take some adjustment. There is going to be a, a sense of like, you said, oh, like no, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. You know, like it's like, it's like moving, moving sucks. Even if the move is a good move. You know, I, I remember moving into my house um, five years ago and I was so excited, but oh my God, it was hell on earth. I mean, I hated it. Then you're unpacking and you got to wait for the movers and they put the wrong box in the room. And I mean, it, it's just awful. And, you know, it's almost like you get to that point where you're almost exhausted and tired. You're like, can I just go back to the old way? But, you know, don't allow yourself to get, it will calm down. The dust will settle. But it's going to take some courage and bravery on your behalf and a little bit of um, optimism and a little bit of um, just keep pushing forward. That's why I've that's why my biggest message in the past month has been work on yourself now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cause it's going to be a lot easier if you work on yourself now versus then. Because you know the I mean? moving is like you go through the same emotions that you go through when you go through a death. And it's interesting yeah. that you say that because I was. Stephanie, you know, I don't want to be in Atlanta anymore. I don't want to, I, I love Atlanta. This is my hometown. I'll always be an Atlanta girl, but, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I've lived in Los Angeles. I've lived in London. I've, you know, I, I'm just ready to, to move away from Atlanta and I'm ready to like not be here anymore. And I was thinking about this when I was driving back from Florida and I was like, the possible thinking about moving though, there's going to be some grieving. There is going to be some like more, even though I don't want to be here, there's going to be some like mourning that has to happen, even though this is my hometown, like it's not like it's going anywhere, you know, but, um, you know, not that I'm, I don't know where, when or how or where I'm moving guys. And that please, I'm not, I, I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> I just know I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a few things right now because I'm gonna come, you're going to come join me in Florida. Yeah. I love, I love to be, I love, I mean, I just got back from there. It's great. So don't, don't think I'm like, don't ask me. Wasn't where. Ravi grieving after leaving Florida? Oh, he always grieves, but he's, and that's his, um, for him though, as a dog from South India, climate. that's his climate. So he always, and he, he's just way more relaxed there. And, you know, and I, I'm a city girl. I love my cities. Like I've always loved cities that grew up in cities. Like, but right now I'm, I'm ready for something. I don't know. We'll see. I'm just waiting to see. I know things are about to drastically change. I know that, especially for me. I know that. So I'm just kind of like waiting to see where the universe sends me. Yeah. That's why I'm, why I'm kind of just like hanging out and just, you know, so anyway, and I think a lot of people know their lives are about to drastically change. So and that's probably the heavy anxiousness we're all feeling too. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't know, like, like, we don't know for sure what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. We don't know the time, the happen. place, the hour, the day. Like a thief it's in like, the night, like a thief in the night, maybe. Like, like a thief in the night. Yep. Absolutely. 100%. So just buckle up, be ready at any time. Jesus said, have your lamp trimmed and your, your, your lamp, you know, your wicks trimmed and your lanterns lit at all times, you know? Have your legs um, shaved, what? <laughs> It, it's it's metaphorical it's not literal it's metaphorical so just be on the ready um 
make sure you got some food saved up and some water and, and stuff like that. And, uh, even learning a little bit of the old ways on how to cook, like on a bonfire or make sure if you have a, a grill, you have gas for your grill, because if the lights do go out, you know, you want to be prepared for that. You know, I have camping equipment up the wazoo, but you know, um, it's always good to have backup stuff, you know, a generator, all that kind of stuff, gas. I was about to say, please, dear God, do not let the lights go out for 10 days in the dead of summer here in Atlanta, Georgia. We will not survive. <laughs> we will not survive. Just come visit me, Bryce. It's colder up here. We will not survive that. It is too damn hot. We will be we will be passing out. Um, you know, it's funny too. I think when we agreed to come down on this plan, and I'll actually show you, I shared something on Twitter that I thought was beautiful um regarding this. Let me find it. Let me go to my Twitter page here. That's the social media besides um YouTube, Twitter is the social media that I'm now the most active on. It used to be uh, Instagram when I was more in, in uh, the yoga world. But let's see, where did I post that? Um, oh, here we go. Let's see here. It says, going to Earth was the hardest thing I've ever had to do for every soul who signed up for the Earth game. I give you credit and I love you. We are all one. And it Heck goes yeah. on. No one said it would be easy diving into a lower density to forget completely who we are. We eternal beings of light that signed up to play a game of duality to evolve and learn soul lessons. In order to experience this specific game, we had to forget who we were as we passed through the veil of forgetfulness as we were born into a lower dimension. The more inner work soul journey you focus on, the more you connect with your higher self and remember which is what's happening to me specifically. I'm starting to remember things. You start to integrate the higher aspects of yourself back together as you become more of your multidimensional self. The game is the process of self-discovery and remembering the true essence and miraculous spiritual beings of God that we are. So we did sign up to come to this earth and forget everything. I, I've said it before. I thought it was a vision, but I, now I know it was a memory of, of walking down a, what I appear, appeared to be a hallway where the angels bowed. And I was walking beside my twin, of course, because you're the same soul. And, and I didn't want to do it. Like I was dreading it. I was dreading it. I did not want to come down here. I remember having, that's the sense. That's what I felt this past few days too, is that same sense of dread. But at that point, I knew everything that was going to unfold. And I also knew that I wasn't going to remember. And I've told you, Stephanie, the last thing that my twin said to me before we left and came to this earth was, I will find you. That was the last thing that was said to me. I will find you. And then we left and came to the earth. But, but then you know that you're forgetting everything when you come to the earth. So whatever is meant to be will meant to be. We yeah. have to put faith in God that, see, things align specifically for a reason, just like the planets align for a reason, that energy, right? Well, what difference do we have with our lives with the planets? I mean, it's the same thing. God has a very methodical uh, plan for each and every one of us individually and also a collective plan. The thing is never to be fearful of that plan coming to fruition. God will put you on the correct path. You just have to listen very closely to the instructions. And um, I've learned in my life to never lose faith in that. The, the things that I've gone through and what God has helped me get through, I won't lo lose that faith because I know there's a God and I know God exists very strongly in my life. And if you're a child of God, same for you, whether you feel it or not, God is still there. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of at a point now where I'm, I'm a little more relaxed about things. And uh, I mean, I feel anticipation. I feel like an excitement feeling. Um, yeah. It's like the jack in the box. Do you remember when you would do the jack in the box? Like, oh, I hated it. Never I hated it. Was it. Was gonna pop out. That's kind of what I hated like it. Right now it's like that noise would pop out. <laughs> the noise would flip me out. Oh my God. Ugh. Don't remind me. Like, that was, when is it that, gonna pop that was out? a nightmare growing up. 
I need, I need an itinerary. <laughs> like, when is this gonna happen? Yeah, I'm Why kind of, itinerary? I'm kind of a girl on the whim. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. This is where me and you defer. Like, I, yeah. you're like, I want oh. itinerary, and I want and it at schedule. this time and this time. And I'm just like, la di da, and whenever it happens, it happens. That's and my... so I think we keep each other balanced, Bryce, because we're kind of the polar opposite when it comes to that kind of stuff. God, God's gonna work His plan. Yeah, yeah. I just know. We're good. We're good. We got this, everyone. Huh. We just <laughs> we got this. Huh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so you know, I mean, we signed up for this. We sure did. <laughs> we sure didn't sign up for and this. And we're like, send me back. I want to go back. I want to go back. for mission. <laughs> Abort mission. abort mission well i don't know about you but i'm not aborting this mission i no, think i got fun. this far i didn't i didn't go i didn't come this far to only come this far like we're gonna go we're gonna ride this out like this is not i didn't i didn't go through the dark night of the soul in india <laughs> just to abort mission now so um all right guys well thank you for sitting through that with us thank you stephanie again for pulling that again if you're you welcome as always it's police department Send them this video. Maybe we just solved the case. So, um, <laughs> all right, guys. Tomorrow I will have, uh, I believe, the Magdalene Manuscript Part 3. I just filmed it. It will be releasing tomorrow. And then the rest of the week, we'll have other videos up for you guys. And who knows what we'll be looking like next week. We'll see. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. We love you guys. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Show.